All right, guys, welcome back to the Epic Creative Podcast. I have myself and Troy Widger live with you guys. Um, this is episode four, talking about low budget music videos. We'll probably do another version of this because we're not able to fit all the things that we want to in the first one. There's just so much to unpack with this topic. Um, but again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so that you don't miss whenever we um, upload a podcast. Also, if you just want to listen to the audio version of this, you can go to the Apple, I'm sorry, you can go to the YouTube music app and the podcast is available there. Just search Epic, E-P-O-C-H, Creative Podcast, and you can listen to it while you're driving or, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but... Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Troy, and we're going to start talking about low-budget music videos um, and what all goes into, you know, doing those. And what I want to get to at the end, Troy, is how you are profitable with these things. Okay, great. All right, well, let's just start off and get right into it with um, what are some of the most essential pieces of gear uh, you would recommend for somebody that's just starting out? And they're making low budget, no budget music videos. What would you say bare minimum gear you would you would recommend to somebody to do? Well, obviously, Troy, you need a camera, right? And a lens. Mm -hmm. That's that's a given. Mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna just put that aside and assume that you've got that and you've you know okay. you, you've got the best camera that you can afford, or like Troy said right. before, you know, the best camera is the one you have. If it's your iPhone, mm -hmm. cool. If you're asking me, uh, you know, I've got X amount of dollars to invest in this music video, what should I get? I would say lighting. Um, because in music videos, you know, a lot of times we talk about how important audio is and how it kind of trumps video. You know, I could mm -hmm. have a, a crappy webcam feed, but if I have a good mic, it, it just it, it makes the product a little better. Music videos aren't like that because you're going to be using the music that's provided to dub over the entire video. So the audio is not as much a, an issue. It's it's the lighting. So if you're going to spend any money or rent any gear, I would say, um, you know, rent yourself about four, you know, good video maker uh, light panels or whatever's available out there. That's if you're just starting out, don't break the bank on the lights. Um, and then if, if you're just starting out and you don't even have the money to rent lights, go to Home Depot. They sell some incredible LED lights that will get you by and you could you know mount here and there um but the I think, work style lights yeah You're talking think, about the work lights yeah work lights i mean even now like the overhead clicker lights you pull dude you can mm -hmm. buy that and just turn it sideways it's basically a light tube you know those right, are the, things the right. film industry is selling for outrageous dollars that home depot is selling you know to your yeah your, your yeah. local woodworker um but I would say sure. lighting is going to be the key. Don't get caught up on a gimbal, you know, all that stuff. I shoot all my music right. videos handheld. Um, if you have, if you're like, okay, I already got lights, um, what would be the next thing? I would say get a fast lens, you know, get something with a yeah. really low aperture because you can have a T6i Rebel camera, but if you have a super fast mm -hmm. lens on it, like a 1.4 or a 1.8, um, it will make your music video look more professional. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I was going to um, add to that. I would definitely recommend lighting too. Um, I've done music videos before where there's maybe a three, four $400 budget and it's going to ruining lights before I had my own lights. So I would say lighting is the most important thing, whether it be RGB or daylight lighting or whatever. Uh, and then I'm trying to think of what you made another good point that I wanted to add on to gimbal. Yeah, you really don't need a gimbal. I mean, I I think I probably use in a music video gimbal for 10 percent of the shots, and at the end of the day, they aren't really needed. So you can go handheld and uh, fast lens. Absolutely, you know you're gonna be in moody situations. You may be in no light, low light situations. Fast lens. So I agree with all those points. Great for us. Let's go into the next hey, one. Then. And one so, last thing. One, one yeah, last thing. absolutely. Yeah, keep going. Um, yeah, yeah, take your time. Locations. I mm -hmm. can't. I can't do that right now, buddy. You got to go. Sorry, guys. It's summertime. I got three kids <laughs> acting <laughs> acting a fool up in here. And want me to peel yeah, oranges? Yeah. Get your sister to do it. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I just want to add one thing to that budget, uh, or sorry, the <laughs> the equipment thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Troy, like Troy said, he, you know, the lights were the first thing he got. Let's just assume you have all that. Locations is something I think that is overlooked. 
and um, I've gotten a lot of my locations for fifty bucks, hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay. Okay. even even almost above lighting, like you need lighting to make the the person's face look good, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. if you have a crappy location, that might not even matter. So um, right. don't overlook well, locations, kinda, you know. Yeah, that kind of goes right with, with the next thing I was going to talk to you about, um, which is storyboarding and planning for a music video when working with limited resources. So you can kind of uh, expound on that a little bit more about how you go about getting these locations, uh, scouting locations, um, securing them. If you want to just talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I have a good friend, or I say a good friend. We've always been internet friends. We've actually never met in person. Alex Ferrari, if you ever watch the Indie, ma yeah. indie Filmmaking podcast indie filmmaking podcast Sounds very indie, familiar. sorry I'm it's sure indie, fil indie film hustle is the name of the podcast okay huge okay. podcast but there's something he said sure that, that always stuck with me is uh you know shoot what you have so right. a good example is i did a, a cmt music video for an artist named hillary reese and uh they had a, a pretty low budget for it to be on cmt you know, around $3,000. So there wasn't a lot of uh, money to spend on locations or to travel, you know. And she does most of her work in Nashville, but we shot the video down here in Mississippi. And I basically just started driving around my town and the neighboring town, and I found, like, a super cool laundromat um, that just had this retro vibe and old arcade games in it. Um, I found an old community center that looked like, you know, an old dance hall. Um, and I actually got one of those for free and the other one I got for like 25 bucks. Um, but, you know, I'll spend, like you were saying one day in our pod, Troy, I'll spend, you know, 80% of the whole project is in preparation. So I'll spend weeks and weeks and I'll, I'll put some uh, images on screen, guys, just to illustrate this even better. Um, one of the milling notes that we did for that video and how much planning actually goes into it. And we had uh, 50 extras, um, three crew members, and yeah, a lot of moving parts and some people there shooting behind the scenes. Um, so using Milanote, and, and I'm not trying to, we're not sponsored by Milanote or anything, but using something similar to Milanote where everything can be centralized. Um, you know, we had our wardrobe was in there, you know, so Hillary could, to, could go in there and tweak that. Um, we had a makeup artist that came and all our scheduling and our planning and our, you know, um, call sheet was in there. Um, we had all of our mood boards were in there for like different things we wanted. And if you look at that, uh, Miller note and go through and just, you know, scour all the, uh, sample images and the potential this and potential that. Uh, and you see kind of where we wanted to go and then you watch the video. It's really spot on like we got Basically everything we wanted and we're just being resourceful, you know, like my stepdad has an old, you know 1970s Dodge truck and you know, just just Using the resources that you have available and getting creative, you know, that's what we talk about all the time You just got to get creative um, but I think I steered away from your your uh, question a little bit. But we use Milanote basically to storyboard everything, and we didn't storyboard it shot by shot. It was more scene by scene. And I'm just using this one music video as an example because I can readily throw this these images on screen right. for you guys. Right. Um, but you know, we did it scene by scene, so we knew we wanted to have an outdoor like Fourth of July scene with people swimming with the sparklers and you know having a beer. And then we wanted a scene where it looked like she was having like a hometown. Uh, concert, you know what I mean? Kind of like the Guitar Hero mm -hmm. One concert that's in the backyard, <laughs> that mm -hmm. kind of look. Um, and then we wanted like the laundry mat look, which, funny enough, dude, that whole music video, they were all right beside each other. And when I say right beside nice. each other, I mean like the yard was here where we shot, and then you walked inside to the community building where we filmed the um, actual concert, and then the next awesome. building was the laundry mat. So it just cool. worked out. I mean, that was smooth. Yeah. Yeah. And we had it scheduled out That's and we, we had nice. a, uh, my mom actually came and was like the line producer for the day. I just told mm -hmm. her, Hey, okay. this is your schedule. And I gave her a, uh, what do you call it? A megaphone. And basically mm -hmm. I would say, Hey, I need everybody to go inside and get ready for the next scene. And she would, she would get everybody. And then when they got in there, she kind of, she was kind of like a concierge, like you don't want your extras. When you have like 50 to 60 extras, you don't want people standing around wondering what's going on. Yeah. Um, and so it's good to have somebody, even like my mom, she's never worked in the film industry or anything, but she's good with people. 
She's highly organized. And you tell her, hey, this is what I need you to do. No problem. She did it. My aunt was there. She was the, um, uh, what do you call it, the set designer, basically. I had all these drawn pictures yeah. of what I wanted and all these props in a yeah. box. And she, I, she was there from like 6 in the morning to 8 at night. You know, she oh, set up everything. And that freed me up to be and we had it like set like we'd shoot this scene while we're shooting this scene she's getting ready this scene and she actually brought my cousin along to be breaking down the last scene so they're like cleaning up this one then we're on to this one it was a lot of organization but just you know just put it all in a centralized place and use 80 percent of your time to to do what i'm talking about because then that little 20 percent or that 10 percent rather when you're shooting you're not as stressed because everybody's got a handle on what's going on. Right. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I'll add to that. I uh, shot a music video for an artist named Indra Portal where we had, I think, a $400 budget and we spent half of it on lights and half of it on wardrobe. So it was literally the two of us where she did all her own makeup, did her own wardrobe, everything. And I handled everything else. <laughs> and there were times where we were literally, like you said, to use what you have. We were just, uh, she had a house that she rented as an Airbnb. So we just shot in the house, colored white walls, uh, went out in the desert behind the house, right where the Joshua Tree National Park was, carried a bunch of RGBs out there, <laughs> set that up, dodged all the cactuses. And uh, the neighbors were pretty interested in what was going on. But, uh, you know, we got in and got out pretty quick and made it happen with, without causing too much of a scene. So, yeah, with Four said, just kind of use what you have and just look around you. And as far as props and stuff go, use what you have and look around you. Just get creative. Hey, right. one, one more note on that is music videos are incredibly forgiving. Um, There's no rules. There's, there's no, no rules. rules. Music videos. <laughs> yep. Yep. So you, you can really go wild with them. Okay, let's go into the next one. Uh, what are some creative solutions you've used? Well, we kind of already talked about this to overcome budget constraints without compromising the quality of the video. Um, yeah, I have another good example solutions. for this one. Um, the okay. first music video, well, I don't want to say the first because, I, I mean, I did some really bad ones way back in the day. Mm -hmm. But the first one mm -hmm. I did that I guess I would – put out there as my first one that I actually feel yeah. okay showing people uh, was for my actual band, the Tom Fulleries, and the song was called Tumble, if you guys want to go look it up. Right. But um, basically, I had a point-and-shoot Nikon camera, little cool pics that shot video too, yeah. and what we did was we set up black curtains in our studio just to make an absolutely pitch black uh, wall, and then we used a light-to-light one person's face and in that little 10 by 10 space we would film um is my camera still on okay cool i don't know something happened to my camera yeah. it like went to sleep or something yeah, we would we would film each individual band member doing the entire song three or four mm -hmm. times right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then in post-production uh, i did a lot of like um rotoscoping animation like I would have all kind of stuff on people's faces and, you know, little animations of a tumbleweed going by. And um, I would be able to snap in each member and even put all of us in one scene because I was basically doing a green screen method without a green screen. You know, I was doing a right. black screen. That's and, cool. Very cool. Yeah. And when you watch the video, uh, it's not anything to, you know, write home about, but it, it's definitely, it's definitely got a style and it's, um, it doesn't feel like it was shot in a 10 by 10 space the entire time. And it's time. no budget. And it's no budget. At it's the no same budget. Time. Yeah, it's no budget. Yeah. Um, and yeah. even for the light, like that was before, obviously, I didn't have a good camera. We were filming our, our behind the scenes with like a handy cam, literally, a mini DV right. camera, and I was converting the footage over. And I just happened yeah. to buy this little point and shoot. This is back when, you know, music was my absolute main thing, and the video just right. was burped out of it. But. I bought a little uh, Coolpix point-and-shoot um, rugged camera from uh, some thrift store, and uh, it did video, and I, I, that was like before I really even understood frame rate, so I couldn't even tell you what frame rate it was shot at. I just pressed record on the thing. Um, but people really liked that video, and even when I look back at it, I'm like, wow, that's not like the best video ever, but man, you talk about... It's creative. It's creative and unique. For no budget, it's a very creative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you're looking for in a music video, creative and unique, I think. Um, and, you know, it's good to have 
references like for storyboarding um but you know kind of play off those references kind of riff off of them all right let me get into the next one here i guess we will pretty much those kind of those last two kind of went hand in hand with each other uh, experience what are some of the key factors that make a low budget music video successful and engaging for viewers i kind of already said what i feel just now so yeah um you know it really also depends on the artist because you're gonna have a mm -hmm. lot of artists hit you up about doing music videos and that's another thing we can mm -hmm. get into on another pod is just like finding profit in this um right. because even though even though we we said low budget and we just talked about two no budgets, basically. Mm -hmm. One Troy did that he spent his whole budget, and then one I did that didn't have a budget. Um, there's definitely a place to make money with this, um, and I've done it several times. Probably, probably twelve of the twenty music videos I've done have mm -hmm. profited, and nowadays I only do profited ones. Um, but uh, yeah, a good music video it starts with the song, right? If the song is no good, it's gonna be hard to make a good music video. And it depends right. on your 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 artist's uh, audience. You know, you're kind of at the you're you're kind of at the mercy of them. So yeah. whenever they bring you the song and you check out the artist, it's like you know they only have ten followers. In the case of Hillary Reese, she's you know the two music videos we've done have gotten two million views, and wow. she's supported by a label and you know, has, um, the CMT features her videos whenever they're made. So it, it's, even though there's, I still, I still consider that low budget because, yeah, you know, I've got a, I've got a, uh, another internet friend that I've chatted with a lot who owns a mm -hmm. uh, studio up in Nashville and he does all of Kenny Chesney videos. He's done every Kenny Chesney video that's ever existed. He, uh, yeah. just did, he just did Jason Aldean and, um, and, uh, What's that girl's name who does the Super Bowl? She sings for the NFL. Oh, uh, gosh. American Idol winner. Anyways, he does like big, big music videos where like one of the videos was like $400,000 budget, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So low yeah. budget to me, like 10000 and below would be considered low budget. And I get it. Those okay. artists are super hard to find. Um, mm -hmm. But but whenever you kind of set your threshold, I mean, you got to do the first five for free basically you know and you've got to be very creative um and, and that fast lens thing helps out a lot because you want this thing to look like it was you want to punch above your weight class is that a good way to say it you know you want this thing to look like huh that must have cost a lot of money right so right. to me that's what's going to make you successful as a music video creator is punching above your weight class being creative um you know the guys over at Tropic Color. They're they're famous in California for making music videos oh, yeah. from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and Jacob Owens, he's probably the king of like getting creative. You know, going out in the desert and finding an old Jeep that's abandoned and shooting in that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that that's to me what's going to make it successful is how creative can you get and how much can you do with the little bit that you have. Because you're going to keep stepping up. Like, if you do, if you punch above your weight with this person, well, then this next artist that's a little ahead of them, maybe they're a regional, you know, known artist and they are doing a little touring, they're going to notice. And then if you punch above your weight with them, then it's going to go up to, you know, the more national touring artist. And then if you punch above your weight them, hopefully you're just going to keep elevating. Uh, now that we're on the subject, too, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like fiending to do a music video. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool let's go um into the next one what are some tips on um networking and collaborating uh with other people in the industry uh to help up-and-coming artists produce those music videos on a tight budget do you find value in maybe uh, collaboration with another videographer in those times uh what are your thoughts on that yeah, we could do a whole podcast on just networking in general and how important it is. Um, but I guess to give you another real life example, um, you know, networking for music videos can definitely be kind of tricky, but the power of the internet is unprecedented. And I would definitely use that to your advantage. Um, I had some friends that have worked in music, you know, live production stuff and marketing music and so again use what you have if you like these people i went to college with and i just kind of decided one day to see what they were up to on linkedin and lo and lo and behold one of them's doing sound for cat williams the other one is doing uh marketing for hangout fest and so 
you know, I hit one of the people up and said, hey, I'm doing music videos. Here's, you know, a bunch of them that I've done. And that's what landed me the CMT video because the okay, thing, cool. I'm doing country music mainly, except yeah. for except for Chad Knight, which is like reggae rock, but um, most yeah. mostly country music. And what you don't realize is how many levels there are to it. You know, there are people who are just starting out that can only spend $400. There are people like Kenny Chesney who's going to spend almost a million. And then there's all the people in between. And you can actually, if you do a good job in terms of, you know, making it look professional, making it look like it belongs on the country music channel, you know, uh, in my case, if you can make it look like that, uh, there are a lot of artists that can spend 3000 4,000, 12,000, because they're, you know, they're supported by a label a lot of times too, and a marketing yeah. agency. And those people yeah. are doing their due diligence and making sure, okay, we've got X amount set, set for uh, two music videos this year, you know, mm-hmm. and, and at the end of the day, they just need to hire the videographer or the cinematographer. Um, and so that's another way you can do, like I started, uh, I started going through uh, different uh, labels and stuff. That, that had the artists in the tier that I'm trying to jump to. And I would just, mm-hmm. I mean, dude, I would just do what we're doing right now. I would set up a Zoom call, see if I could speak with, you know, the uh, the manager or whoever. And mm-hmm. just kind of let them know what I'm doing and tell them who I am. You know, the internet is kind of the way to go nowadays because, you know, in my case, all those artists, they're in Nashville. You know, I, I could spend probably a thousand dollars and drive up there for a day, get a hotel, go door to door and knocking. Um, but I do find that it's more cost effective and uh, actually a little better because people feel more comfortable nowadays for better or worse, you know, in front of a camera like this. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, use the Internet to your disposal, find out who these artists are, find out what labels they're with. And then you can, you, you know, use common sense. Um, you're probably not going to get, you know, the Kanye West music video right now. Exactly. But here's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Kanye's label, they have artists that are still paying for their own hotel rooms. Okay. They, mm-hmm. they have artists all the way up and down. So find mm-hmm. somebody that is kind of in the range you think you could hit and start reaching out to those level artists. And then we've got a few of those videos done. Go to the next level. And it's just a constant, constant building up. Mm-hmm. And just to power, uh, power the portfolio using yeah. your YouTube and channel. Full disclosure, guys, I feel like I'm at level three, you know, out of 10 mm-hmm. because I've had two mm-hmm. music videos that were like nationally broadcast, but even still, you know, that person, she's still coming up. Like she's, yeah, right. you've never heard of her. Right. Uh, some people might have, I don't right. want to disrespect her. She's awesome, but she's very young. She's only 19 years old and she's already mm-hmm. got four CMT videos, but, um, yeah, so I'm still trying to level up as well. Mm-hmm. It's a grind. It's a, you know, people think that, like, you use Kanye West, for example. Like, he didn't become, he wasn't just Kanye West overnight. You know, there's always a struggle and a progression. He had to start off, you know, making beats for people with no money, just like you may have to start off shooting a video for people with no money. And then you just keep scaling up. But the best thing you can do is just keep building that portfolio. And I would say, Every job you do, um, especially these music videos, just let it be known that this is going to be used for my portfolio because I'm trying to build that up and I'm trying to do something with this. And most of the time, they're going to be cool with that because it's more exposure for them as well. And that's what we're trying to do with these music videos is ultimately get exposure for that artist so they can gain a fan base. No, I totally agree. I think you might have said it. I keep giving you these quotes, even if you didn't say it, we're going to pretend you did. But if you never quit, you can't fail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really yeah, do believe exactly. that. Like, if you never quit, yeah. that it's just inevitable that you're. And, and even if you do fail, you never quit. So there's one positive yep. to take out of it. Yeah, it's like when people ask you, like, "Oh, you still doing that video thing? Oh, you still doing that music thing? You still trying that?" But like, I'm, I'm doing it. If you never quit, you're always doing it. So you, you know, you're in the process always. Yeah, yeah. And you enjoy it. You enjoy it more if you do it without expectation. Exactly. Yep. Just do it and know that it's a journey. It's a process. It's going to take time. But uh, every little job and every video you show along the way is going to be fun. You're going to learn from it and you're going to grow from it. And that's a beautiful thing. And people hopefully will like your work and be stoked on you even more. And that's how you build your clientele. Heck yeah, man. Totally agree. Cool. Well, that that um, goes over all of that. Anything else you want to get into? Anything else you got to 
add I've to got, this? I've got about 10 minutes. Um, I kind of want to touch on the thing we talked all about off air, which was uh, how do you actually book these things? Um, right. You know, me and Troy have been using, I call it the Facebook group hack for like a lot of different video uh, production, I guess, marketing things. But I, I find that's a good place to market. Uh, if you're trying to just start out and maybe even get a video in that thousand dollar range, that's a nice sweet spot too, yes. because you can, you can start profiting after about a thousand dollars. You know, you can set aside 400 bucks and Hey, you made $600 on a Saturday. Of course you do have to edit yeah. the video, but I find editing music videos to be pretty easy. Um, but mm -hmm. that being said, uh, you know, go to Facebook, uh, groups and find like, you know, um, you know, Chicago musicians or Atlanta musicians, yeah. wherever you're at, find the metropolitan area. Uh, that's also going to help a lot. Um, because you know, the bands in those areas are going to be making a little more money with their, with their shows. Yeah. Um, but find yeah. those Facebook groups and start sharing your work. Or, you know, if you haven't shot one yet, just put it out there and say, Hey, I'm trying to build my portfolio up. Uh, here's another type of video I shot. So I am capable with a camera. Um, does anybody want a free music video? And you'd be surprised uh, whenever you put that out there, you're going to get about 100 DMs um, from all kind of artists. And that's nice because then you can vet. You can say, okay, send me your song. Let me see if I want to do it. And you can vet like who, who you might want to do a music video for because you have to be careful with that. Um, I've had a lot of artists, and it's just a different – they're at a different place in their journey. It's not that they're bad. It's just, right. you know, I have, to, I have to make sure the music's good because – it, it could taint my video in a way, you know, it could taint my name if, if the video is awesome, but the music's just terrible, mm. you know, it, it, on a subconscious level, the next artist might not want to hire you because they're associating you with that song. <laughs> and that's true because if you, if you, you have to like the song because you're going to be listening to it a lot, right? You're going to be editing this thing. Um, oh, and that's another thing with equipment. You're going to need a little cheap, um, MP, you know, streaming Blu-ray speaker or something, so that oh, way you can yeah. have the artist lip sync into their music and everything. So that might be the most important piece of equipment. I just it assume, really, I just really assume everybody's got, you know, dude. If it takes your cell phone, you can do it. Now, if there's yeah, drums, absolutely. if there's like drums and stuff involved, you know, you're gonna need something a little more powerful, um, or a drummer that can play would, to the click, you know. Yeah, I would just say like if you're gonna have them lip syncing to uh, the music, just make sure it's loud enough so that your software can sync it. Um, I've had situations where I would say you could run one of them like little JBL Flip Fives at like half volume, and it synced it up fine. There was no issue with it being too low or whatever. But yeah, just find that sweet spot. Make sure your music is kind of loud enough so your software can pick it up, sync it, and post all that great stuff. Um, and then, yeah, you got to like the song because you're going to be listening to it a lot. So, you know, a lot of times the artist may come to you and have a song picked out already, or maybe you're coming to them and you can say, you've, Hey, you know, let me hear your three best songs. And then you pick the one that you like, because you're going to have, you're going to be more passionate about it because you like that song and say, Hey, I really like this song. Let's, you know, let's come together and do something, make a video for this song. For sure. Uh, one more thing, too, I just thought about, Troy, that I've done a few of. And mm -hmm. if let's say you're going to go into music videos solely. That's all you're going to do. Um, a really good sh revenue stream that you can do is these these artists will normally do a music video and then they'll do lyric videos. Um, lyric and they, lyric videos usually are just to go on their YouTube page so people can pull them up. And, you know, it's just a lyric video. I don't mm -hmm. know how to explain it. I'm not sure what the purposes entirely but everybody from kanye to uh john party has lyric videos on their youtube and people pay for them and it's a nice way too to supplement some income i've done three or four of those for like five to eight hundred dollars and i don't have to go anywhere you know i'm mostly using either footage we already shot or stock footage even um you know the last one i did it was like a country song about um the rodeo so like i was able to find tons of rodeo stock footage put a nice opaque you know, grainy background on top of that and then animate all the lyrics on top of uh, on top of the song. And artists, they need those. Every single artist you know is pretty much yeah. got a, a lyric video, you know. So that's just another, like, yeah. form of revenue that you can pull in. And you don't have to leave your house. It's basically 100% profit other Oops. than your time. Oops. All right. Well, I don't have anything else. If you don't have anything else. 
No, I don't. And we'll, we'll definitely do another part to this um, and probably several parts. I'd like to also get on some people who are more qualified to talk about this. I know a yeah. few guys that are Greater doing scale. music. Yeah, they're doing music videos on a on a massive scale. But we'll build the podcast up before we you know approach them. But uh, yeah, I don't have anything else. So guys, thank you so much for watching the Epic Creative Podcast. Uh, if you would, please like and subscribe. And again, if you want to listen to just the audio, you can go to the YouTube music app and then they have a little podcast tab. Hit that uh, search EPOCH creative podcast and you can listen to it when you're driving. Uh, share it with your friends. Um, yeah, man, just uh, follow us. We love it. This is yep. fun. Thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate you. Peace and have a good day. Yes, sir. I will see you later, Troy. All right. Talk to you soon.